welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode three of our Car Care Tech Week eight episode extravaganza. Today we're going to take a look at the Greenworks 2300 Pro pressure washer. Yeah, Bruce, I'm really excited to jump into this topic, but isn't a pressure washer like this, isn't it kind of a very specialized and kind of expensive piece of equipment that only a professional would use? You know, that is a great question, and at first glance, that's probably, uh, probably the case. But let's take a look at this from a couple of different angles. So first, let's talk about the cost of this particular unit. It is less than $300 on Amazon today. Um, as well, a pressure washer is something that you can get for even less money than $300, uh, and those less than $300 models are still capable of doing the job. Okay, okay, I get it. So the, the pressure washer that we're reviewing is something that is far from the cheapest, but that there are cheaper models available that could do the job. But, but what is the second angle that you were alluding to? Oh yes, well, regardless of the cost of the pressure washer, if it was dedicated to just the task of cleaning your car, for us weekend warriors, it's probably a luxury item, plain and simple. But if we take a look at the multitude of uses that a pressure washer has around your home and for cleaning some of those other things other than your car, now we're talking a little bit different story. Go on, I'm listening. Well, for example, let's take, I don't know, your back deck, your grill, your windows, especially the ones that are up high on the house as well. How about uh, vinyl and aluminum siding, as well as your sidewalk and driveway, the stairs to the studio, and a whole host of other items that a pressure washer can help you clean. Okay, I got you now. So if you're just talking about washing your car, that's a kind of a limited market, but you expanded all those use cases out. Now, now that piece of equipment seems to be earning its keep a little bit more. Exactly, Keith. So if I told Cindy that I was going to spend $300 for a device that was strictly for washing the car, that'd be pretty much a non-starter. But because we had actually already had a unit, she had seen all the things that we could clean, and that unit needed to be replaced, it was actually a pretty easy sell because we had already been using one, she had already seen the value, and we needed to get a new one. Okay, well, aside from giving our viewers some cost justifications to purchase one of these things, um, how does it actually work to wash your car? Great question, Keith. Let's start with the obvious, and that is the pressure washer is going to take the input garden hose water and increase the pressure that's supplied by a tremendous amount. Now, how much is going to vary by pressure washer to pressure washer? The particular unit that we're looking at today, the Greenworks 2300 Pro, is a 2300 pounds per square inch unit with a 2.3 gallon per minute flow rate. These are great numbers and ones that a regular garden hose and the attachment right, the sprayer handle, are not going to be able to come close to matching. Yeah, I see I teed up a really easy question for you there. So it sounds like we're just taking a calm, mild-mannered garden hose and we're amping it up to get some clean, mean, green pressure washing machine going here. So what if we don't really need all that much power? As much as we all probably love the more power mentality... <laughs> Sometimes we need to bring our finesse game. Here's where the tip that we use with the device and our first accessory purchase for the pressure washer comes into play. Oh, okay, a tip, huh? So what kind of tip are we talking here? Like 20%? No, 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 not, not that kind of tip. We, we don't have a waitress or a waiter to, to worry about taking care of. No, so the pressure washer has a quick connect connector that accepts a number of different nozzles or tips as they're called. The unit that we uh, happen to order ships with a 15 degree, a 25 degree, a 40 degree, a soap dispensing tip, and a turbo tip. Wait, so even though you already had those nozzles with all the different uh, cone angles or spray angles, you went ahead and bought another one with basically the same setting? I did. And so the included tips with the unit are nice. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. However, when you are in the process of cleaning an automobile, and I have a convertible, right? So I also have some additional surfaces like the convertible top that I want to be very careful with. So what that new accessory allows me to do, that five-in-one selectable unit, I can just dial in the amount of angle that I want uh, on the fly. Versus if I use the included tips, what I actually have to do, and usually I turn off the water 
pressure so that it's easier to change the tip, but you have to use that quick connect, pull the tip out, put the new one on. And if you're going quickly between uh, different cleaning areas on your car, you know, lower the wheels, convertible top, plastic parts, uh, the bare metal, you know, or the, the metal painted surfaces of your car, uh, you're going all, sometimes it's nice to be able to just change how much pressure you're using. And certainly when you're washing various things around the house, that on the fly changing of the pressure, huge convenience. Okay. Yeah. So to help visualize this, how about we show a short video? You know, I think it makes sense that as you turn this device, you're going to select automatically at different rotation angles some of these different spray angles. That's a lot easier than removing an entire, you know, nozzle and reattaching a new one each time. Air uh, selector. And so we've got the various degrees or how intense the spray is. So this is a zero degree. Uh, we've got a soap setting. We've got 15 degrees, 25 and 40. Exactly, Keith. As I reach different areas of the car, the sensitivity or even uh, various cleaning projects, as I want to uh, change the amount of pressure or the angle that I'm at, I just quickly dial it in and boom, I'm on the setting that I want. Yeah, and as we know with your big family, you've got a whole fleet of like five cars, so time is of the essence. Truer words have never been spoken. I think most people though, for them, they're, they're busy, they have busy schedules. Anything they can do to you know save some time is, is you know really important. Minimizing time, maximizing results, I think it's huge for most people. Bingo. Couldn't agree more. So how about uh, we show the assembly process, but we'll speed that up and then uh, get into discussing our thoughts on the uh, product itself. I'm game. Let's take a look at how the assembly process went and jump into using this bad boy. Here's the power washer we've been discussing. We're going to go ahead and unbox this, get it set up. Again, a reminder, this is the GPW 2300 or the Greenworks Pro 2300 Max PSI electric, okay, so it's electric, not gas, electric power washer. Let's go ahead and open this up. You can see that this is uh, the first time that I'm getting a chance to see this in person. So this is the storage rack for the various nozzles. So uh, again, I think we might have talked about this already in the uh, setup um to this uh unboxing but the uh nozzles they include are a turbo the soap uh, a 40 degree angle a 25 degree angle and a 15 degree uh, and again they've got a nice little convenient storage uh area for you that's all labeled so you get those back into the right place <laughs> So this has the standard hose connection for the handle itself. And then uh, the uh, nozzle is the quarter inch quick connect. So let's go ahead and just sort through here. So we have a nice, uh, what they've described as a uh, non kinking uh, hose. So uh, I know a lot of people, uh, especially if they do a lot of power washing, they tend to replace these hoses with uh, something more to their liking. I don't know that I'll go to that trouble. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself a power washing pro. I'm not uh, running a uh, car wash business or anything like that. So we've installed the hose hook uh, and then you can take your coiled up hose and hang it from this. Not what I would call the most elegant solution in the world, but uh, probably one of those crude but effective uh, type solutions, which is fine. And again, what we would do with our, our cord, and this does have a very generous cord. If I remember correctly, um, I want to say this is a 25 or 35 foot power cord. Uh, so it's it's pretty generous. I don't believe they want you to use an extension cord on this, but I think, you know, for a lot of uh, situations, you should be um, able to uh, to reach what you're trying to uh, with this cord. Again, it's all wrapped up right now, but it's it's pretty generous uh, length of cord, and it does have the uh, 
interrupt built into it so you can test, you can reset the circuit. So that way if it does become exposed to water, uh, hopefully it doesn't shock you, it's gonna trip that before. And then here's our soap uh, container. So if you want to, you can run soap through this unit. Uh, it's a pretty good size uh, unit and it does have a hose that runs down into that area. So if I just tip this up, here is where our hose reel is going to connect on the back of the unit. And then if I just flip this around, it's actually not too terribly bad in terms of weight. Um, but, uh, and then here's our water supply connection. So this will connect to a standard garden hose. Um, and that, that really kind of wraps things up. I mean, you have the uh, on off button, right? So it's got a pretty hard uh, turn to it. <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, they've really kind of designed this, I think, uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, to look like a lawnmower. This kind of reminds me of the whole pull string uh, assembly of a, of a lawnmower, so uh, interesting design. This is just plastic here, uh, and again, the, the shroud is just uh, to kind of give it a nice look. Uh, and obviously the guts are inside of here. So I think this is going to conclude our walkthrough and assembly. Uh, hopefully you got a lot out of that. Uh, I guess before I I close her up, why don't I go ahead and just I'll show you where the wand goes and just snaps into place there. And obviously this would get attached to, um, but I haven't, haven't uh, installed it yet. But uh, that's, that's really how, uh, how she works. You know, that didn't look like too bad of a process, really. No, it was, it was really pretty simple. Now, one thing I discovered is I thought originally the included hose to connect the wand was going to be, uh, you know, sufficient. Uh, but after the first use, I discovered that uh, I definitely needed one that was going to be longer. Okay, so did you end up replacing that 25 foot long hose with a different one? Yes, you know, 25 feet sounds like it's going to be pretty generous, right? The, that's the one that's included. But in practice, uh, once you start washing a car, I, I discovered that, uh, you know, in order to get all the way around the car and not have to be dragging the, the pressure washer everywhere, that a 50 foot uh, hose is is much more appropriate uh and and faster uh for a process yeah i can i can totally see that being the case so from a usage perspective do you have some video footage for us to look at absolutely so what we're going to show on screen is going to be the pressure washer with the included wand and uh some of the footage is going to mix the replacement uh hose with the new just kind of depends on on when it's from as well you're going to see the grip that i use in order to connect up the foam gun most of the time uh there's times where where the uh, foam cannon um uh, i like using the wand other times i have the shorter uh grip so it just you know kind of a stubby uh nose on that and we'll kind of gloss over much of what we're doing with the foam cannon because uh, part four in this series is going to be reviewing that foam cannon. So we don't want to, you know, steal any of our, our thunder from that episode. There are some things that I did to trick out my pressure washer and we'll cover that in just a little bit. Yeah. Truthfully, this is all good stuff. Actually, I cannot wait to see how you tricked out a power washer. I mean, that's kind of fun tricking stuff out, whether it's a car or a power washer. I'm curious. I have to admit, it was actually kind of fun tricking out the uh, the pressure washer. So as I roll the video, one of the things you're going to see is, uh, generally speaking, I have a quick connect uh, in order to connect up the gun. Um, I added a uh, quick connect for the hose itself so that I can change between the uh, foam cannon uh, grip and the wand. And, uh, you know, I certainly could use that grip uh, with, uh, you know, the rinse uh, phase and, and the tips if I wanted to. Now, most of the time when I rinse the vehicle, I actually prefer the, you know, uh, wand that shipped with the device. Uh, it just gives you extra reach. You know, if I want to hit the top, I want to hit the bottom. And, you know, hitting down low the body panels and the wheels uh, required a lot less bending using that uh, wand. Oh, yeah. Not having to bend as much. I'm right with you right there. That's, uh, that's the old man stuff right there. So what else did you do to trick out your pressure washer. So as I mentioned, I added the 50 foot hose, uh, replacing the 25 foot one. Uh, on the input side, I set it up so that I had quick connect uh, connectors so that I could take the garden hose supply and quick connect it to the uh, input side of the pressure washer itself. And then for the uh, factory wand, the one that shipped with it with the long nozzle, I added a quick connect with swivel so that it reduces a little bit of the strain uh, and pressure as you're trying to reach different spots it's going to just turn as it needs to. And I'll show that on screen so you can see that 
um, you know, what that's going to gonna do for you. Wow. Quick connects and a swivel. Holy smokes. And, you know, I think we covered the reasons why, uh, you know, we replaced with the 50 foot hose versus the 25 foot hose. But um, what about cleaning the car itself? How does the pressure washer help with that? So it comes into play in several areas. So let's go ahead and run down the list and show some video of each of those tasks. First, the pre-wash phase. Whether you start with plain water to start or if you jump to the foam pre-wash, the pressure washer makes this easier. Second, rinsing can be done with a garden hose, but I like to do a high pressure rinse to get rid of more of the dirt and contaminants, remove that from the paint, fender wells, tires, and wheels. Third is the wash phase. It just seems to work better with a foam cannon applying the soap. You'll see the results versus a foam gun that doesn't use the high pressure to create foam. Again, more on this in the next episode covering the MJJC foam cannon. Lastly, the rinse phase using the pressure washer can break loose the final bits of dirt clinging to the paint for dear life. Yeah, that all makes uh, perfect sense to me. Makes me want to rush out and buy one of these pressure washers right now. Uh, but before I do that, can you list out the non-car related use cases? Um, not for Jen to justify the purchase, I mean, but just, just for me, just for me. Sure thing. As a matter of fact, uh, Keith, I'll go ahead and uh, put a graphic with each of these on there as we're going through. That way, if you want to take some notes, you can go ahead and do so and pass those along to Jen, or I, I should say our viewers can, can copy the notes down. So concrete stains, this, this is the first one, and this is a great use of a pressure washer. If you have a large area to clean, they even make an add-on device that's going to run you $30 to $150, and it's a 10 to 16 inch circle that allows you to clean a large area at a time. Now the benefit to using that is a more consistent cleaning result versus if you're just pressure washing with the tips, um, that can create some streaking uh, that's going to happen unless you're you know, really, really disciplined about making sure that you overlap. Uh, outdoor furniture cleanup is a breeze with a pressure washer. So, you know, think those couches, chairs, tables, you name it. Things that you keep outside that get dirt and dust on them uh, from sitting out there. Just be sure to watch the pressure that you're using. Depending on the fabric, paint, wicker, or other materials that they're using, it has the ability to, you know, to take off the finish or tear open the fabric or something. So make sure that you pick the appropriate tip and the pressure that you can apply to that particular surface uh, without damaging it. Do you have a dirty or grimy grill? Well, this is a great use of the pressure washer as well. Now, make sure, you know, if you're using this on the interior of your grill, you could technically do that, but I would use a lot of caution there. But on the outside, oh man, this works like a charm. Now, be careful. Any printing that you have, right, for your controls or labels or anything like that, uh, branding of it, you're gonna wanna be very careful because some of the pressure washers are high enough pressure that they'll actually take that uh, lettering or the controls uh, printed information on there off. So you don't want to lose, you know, what you know, level flame you're at because you pressure washed that uh, printing completely off of the grill. Also, once you get done uh, using pressure washer on the grill, it's probably a good idea to dry it off afterwards. Uh, you know, just, just keep that from, uh, you know, especially if you've got stainless steel, for example, just wash that uh, and then dry it. Um, if you have wood or a composite deck, this is also a great place to use a pressure washer and get great results. Again, watch the nozzle that you pick because you can damage composite materials, right? So a lot of them uh, do have warnings about how much pressure you can use. And then on real wood, you gotta be careful that you don't actually start stripping the wood fibers completely off of your decking material. So again, just make sure that you, you know, utilize that pressure carefully, but otherwise it's a great way to make deck cleanup faster. If you have dirty windows, the pressure washer can help uh, get those clean faster. You can even make solutions that will add soap in the tank and use those specifically for the windows and they won't spot. And then lastly of our examples, although there are tons more, uh, is cleaning your siding. Now I would caution using the pressure washer on painted siding. So if you have a wood or a composite uh, siding material that's painted, maybe resist the urge to use it there uh, unless you're using very low pressure. But on aluminum and vital siding, this can be a huge you know, time saver clean up your siding, just make sure you follow any manufacturer recommendations. Perfect. I think this is exactly what Jen, I mean, our viewers needed to hear. Anything for Jen. I mean, our viewers. So what do you say we move towards the uh, likes, dislikes, and, uh, you know, the uh, status of the seal of approval? Wait, 
That all sounds like stuff that I would say to you to move the episode along. Have, have I become the, the slowpoke in this episode? <laughs> no, Keith. Uh, that, was, that was my bad. I was just super excited to, to get to that information. Well, okay, since we're flipping things around. Uh, I think you said the included wand was good. That's good. And that the included wheels make it easy to uh, transport or roll it around your driveway. That's good, too. Uh, I think you mentioned that the hose was a little bit short, uh, but I think that's probably the case with most pressure washers. They're probably all coming with 20 foot, 25 foot long hoses. So probably not fair to zonk it too much for that, even though that was a negative. You also mentioned that it was easy to assemble. I think that's important too. The electric cord keeper thing doesn't seem to be like the best design ever. As you mentioned, it keeps wanting to loosen and tighten each time you have to move the arm. And speaking of storage issues, you kind of mentioned that the hose hanger really isn't in the, the best location and really it's just kind of a heavy gauge wire rack to begin with. Also, you mentioned there's a bit of a lag from when you pull the trigger, from when the, the water, pressurized water comes out. That uh, is probably the case with a lot of pressure washers, if we're being honest, but it, eh, kind of annoying after a long-term use. And importantly, the pressure and the flow rate. It's good, right? That's actually very important. You're getting 2,300 uh, PSI and 2.3 gallons per minute. Now, there is a slightly cheaper model that only has 1.4 gallons per minute, but hey, we want, we want the higher gallons per minute. Ah. Oh. Uh, okay, well, looks like you pulled a full 360 on me then. 180. If I did a 360, I'd go completely around and end up back where I started. What? <laughs> Classic. Sometimes it's nice just to switch things up. I hear you. And by the way, nicely done. I mean, you must have actually really been listening when I was telling you about my experience with that pressure washer. And so kudos. I Most of the time, I don't even think you're listening to me. Yeah. I'm not sure where all that came from. Oh. Where'd that come from? What happened? I blacked out. So, let's talk seal of approval. Dude, I know you, and from all that you've said or I guess I said, there's really no way that this thing is not getting the coveted seal of approval. Wow. So now it's coveted, eh? Well, I'm sure somebody covets it. I mean, how could they not? Indeed, Keith. Why would that ever happen in a world? And speaking of things that happen in a world, the end of an episode happens in a world. My, how time flies. Well... Next up will be our episode of the MJJC Foam Cannon. And uh, really that product is going to be a great companion to this Greenworks 2300 Pro pressure washer that we've talked about in this episode, or any, any pressure washer, to be honest. And so we look forward to that. Yes, and after that we still have four episodes to go. Yeah, and as great as those episodes are likely to be, we still have some unfinished business right now, namely... Hit that like button. Oh yeah, and don't forget to put some pressure on that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Yeah, and while you're there, show that bell who's boss. And lastly, for Keith, Bruce, and Nessa, you'll see us on the next episode of Dad's Talk Tech.